Hey everybody, this is Herschel Froome from High School Top 200. This uh, 2016 review of Christ College is brought to you by Fine Line Barbers. Now what Vinny has done from Fine Line Barbers is that Vinny has got together with um, uh, some major uh, barbering suppliers and what they've done is that they've put together an Aotearoa Barber competition. This barbering competition is for anybody in New Zealand who's, uh, who is a barber and who wants to show their skills. You don't have to have your... Um, your certificates or anything like that if you're just a really good barber you can jump in uh, this will be held in September 2017 so um, or September sorry September 2017 will, will um, the Aotearoa Barber competition will be held and it's for all barbers to show their skills for the industry to come together and so that they can build a better networking for the barbering community uh, check for the Facebook page and also the Instagram page coming up for barbers to uh, put up their profiles and their work so that uh, we can see as a community what they uh, where the skills and talents are coming from. So remember that September 2017 Aotearoa Barber Competition, Fine Line Barbers, and my boy Vinny is putting it on. Um, uh, down into Christ College, um, I got to give it up to um, their coaches. Uh, Ruben Thorne and also um, Cameron McIntyre for um, not for just putting the team together but I think for making them um, I think believe and also preparing them because and I, I, like a lot of you would have known is that um, if you've been following Christ College for the last um, few years or so like they really haven't looked good at all I mean um Besides Damian McKenzie and and, and um, Harry Peters that were there in 2013, um, even I think even before that kind of there was no real um, <clears throat> no real challenge coming out of that school and no real um, I guess winning coming out of that school. But uh, this year I I knew that they were going to be good. I just thought that um, I didn't know how how good they were going to be and how put together they were going to be like i really personally i really don't care that you know uh you have an, an ex all black captain as your coach and um and also a crusader as your coach uh, or your coaches um because i think it comes down to the boys that are on the field and the guys that are on the field the coaches just get you ready but the guys that i go on the field are actually the ones that execute everything and so i thought they did a great job and getting these boys ready and believing so that when they were on the field they actually went through and and did what they were told um yeah they they did have some bad games um I'm, i mean otago is the first bad game that i would uh probably say was real bad and i and i, I want to see the tapes like i want to see what the game looked like because that just doesn't look like the christ college to me uh, that looks like the old Christ College, really, um, losing 41-0. They, they're just not that kind of team to, to me. Um, but, I mean, they had really good players. Like, obviously, Nani was, like, Nani was the one that came out of there as being, um, you know, the go-to guy. Um, and he was the one that led them around and, and sort of gave them... Um, he was the go-to guy when, when they needed something to happen. And so he was that guy that would step up and, and just get th things back on track. Um, they, had a, they had a really good back line, uh, I, I thought, anyway, because they still had uh, Dallas McLeod there and as well as um, um, Isaiah, um, Nani's uh, little brother, was there. And he's only year 11, so he's going to be around for a while. And they had uh, Gus Gray starting at first, and they had Nick Murray come in um, to pair up in, at first five with James Cole. And so, like, um, the back line was really good. They had a lot of firepower out of the back line, and, and they ran the ball quite a lot, too. Um, I think Nick gave them a bit more options in terms of a kicking game. Um, and Nick will be back next year as well as uh, James, so look out for that pairing in the combos of 9 and 10. But um, yeah, that I, I thought that they had they had good runs. Like um, uh, their first up game against Burnside was thirty nine seventeen, which was really good. I, I wasn't too convinced on that St Thomas, which was their second game. They only won twenty three fifteen, whereas I thought they should have ran up the score a bit more. Um, 
then they went on to beat Rangiora as then and then also St. Bede's scoring 40 to 19. So like if you look at that 40 to 19 against St. Bede's and then you look at the St. Thomas 23 15, those scores should actually be the other way around. Um sort of just comparing you know those kind of rosters. That's the kind of game that you'd think would would, would go on between these two teams. And so like I, I kind of felt sometimes it was a bit inconsistent. Um they ran up the score on Lincoln as well as Ron Kelly. And then the game that I felt, um, I felt that it was maybe a bit too early was the Christchurch game that came on TV because I think they got a bit, um, uh, maybe shocked at, at the occasion, um, knowing what was at stake, knowing that they were that good. And then now they had to go out and prove it maybe was a bit too much for some of the boys. Um, because, 32-11 shouldn't have been that scoreline, not at all. It should have been a lot closer than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, like uh, beating Wellington College was a big one. I, I I really, I really thought was one of their big games that they had. And I mean, like they, I mean they had they had Matt Kelleher, um, Kale Thatcher, as well as um, Kavine in the. And their loose trio, and so like with those three players, um, they're good enough to get you um, the defense that you need, as well as the go forward ball, um, and then also they pack on a lot of defense. Like Matt and and Kale do a, uh, do a lot on defense. Um, obviously, Kavino would be your uh, your main ball runner, and he will be next year as well because he's coming back. And so, like, they had enough firepower to to sort of um, keep up with these other teams. Then you had John O'Gilmore and then um, um, Tane Hintz in the in the in the front row as well. And then you know Ben Chamberlain would also help out as well. So, so like, they had a lot of players that just I just felt some of these some of these games were um, maybe a bit too much for them. Uh, I like the I like the Crush game and also that Otago Boys game. But I mean, they went on to win um, all the other games after that. Um, they, they, I mean, like you look at the the game against Shirley Boys, where they won thirty three ten over Shirley Boys, only to lose a couple of weeks after that fourteen seventeen to Shirley Boys again. And so, like, and that's just another for me. That's just what it looks like to me when you look at um, the occasion of it. Because they knew that that game against Shirley Boys um, really mattered. Uh, it meant something. It was it was there for them to um, to go on to the finals and things like that. And so, like, um, I just feel, uh, yeah, maybe I, I don't know if it's just me, but to me, it just seems like that when occasions come up, knowing that it's an occasion. And it's something that is going to be watched or it's something that's going to be viewed or something that's going to be highlighted. It didn't look like they turned up. And so, like, that's that's the reason why I think like that. But as overall, as a team, I thought they were good. I mean, they still had, you know, they, they always had a lot of players um, a lot of players to support and a lot of players to um, to be there as backup. And so you didn't have to rely on on Nani all the time or on, or on Matt and Kale or, you know, Dallas to, to get you those meters. You know, the whole team was always there. And it just, just seems to me that once that occasion came, um, then, yeah, it's, it just looked like... It just looked like they didn't turn up anyway. Um, next year they have, uh, they have a few players returning back next year and they have some good guys coming from seconds and under 16s, I think it is, next year as well. Uh, they have a big lock signing that's coming in, uh, from what I've heard, and um, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be a big boost to this team, and they're going to have to try and shuffle it around because um, Goodman and Chamberlain I think are both coming back as well, and so they're going to have another lock in there too. So if one of those guys could maybe shift over to blindside, which would be pretty good, um, and I think it would maybe give them more size as well. Um, maybe a bit slower, but I mean, if they have a good open side, that will be there as well. Maybe to 
give them some speed around the field, lock some lock down some runners uh, on defense. But um, yeah, I see Christ as being a, a pretty good school next year as well. And um, I'm really excited to see what happens and, and how they work out their team for next year and what players uh, will they fit in together. Um, Isaiah will be one that I'll be looking for. James and Nick in the um, uh, halfback and first five. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we'll see what happens. I'm excited to see what they what they do. This is my Christ's College um, review. Um, hope you enjoy. Peace.